Billy, I got a, I got a pretty crazy story for you, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I checked myself out of emergency surgery to do, go do a weekend of comedy at the Laugh Factory in San Diego about five years ago. What, start that over. You did what? So here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had an intestinal surgery in July of 2015. And I just didn't feel right about it. I felt like it wasn't healing. I felt, I just felt sluggish. I felt weak. I'm anemic. So I have to kind of pay attention to things like that in my body. Right. And I just kept going. The surgery healed supposedly or what I thought. So I kept going about my day. I was doing everything I was supposed to. I was taking iron pills. And then I saw my grandma and she was like, Josh, I think you should go get the iron shot. So I decided to go get a shot of iron to, for just a supplement in my body because my body doesn't create it. And this being said, I have a big opportunity to perform at the Laugh Factory in San Diego, Oof. opening for Louis Anderson. Oof. So this is a gigantic deal. This is all that's on my mind. Right. So the Thursday before I fly out, I have to fly out Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday shows. The Thursday before I make a doctor's appointment, I call my doctor. I'm like, I want the iron shot. He's like, come in, we'll run your blood, and then we'll talk about it. They run my blood, all good. I go home. And this is where I knew something was wrong. <laughs> I rented the Vince Vaughn movie, um, Business as Usual, oh, yeah. or whatever that movie yeah. was, where they travel, they're traveling businessmen. Yeah. And then I'm packing my bag. I cry at the end of that movie, <laughs> which it's not a crier, everybody. <laughs> so I'm like, I think there might be something wrong. <laughs> and then I'm two week after packing, and I have to take a nap in the middle of the day. Wow. I wake up, and then I get a call from my doctor's office, and they're like, hey, we need you to come to the ER. We're sending you an ambulance. Your blood, your blood iron levels are so low that you could go into shock and die. How did they know that? They, Because they ran my blood that day. Oh, they wow. Because I went in to ask about wow. the shot. So not only uh, is the shot off the table now, but they need to do a bunch because right. there's something wrong inside of me. Wow. I go to the hospital. Um, I go into the, they're like, just come to the ER. I go into the ER, and we've all been to the ER. It's a two-hour wait, even if you have your arm cut off and it's in a bucket. <laughs> I walk in, and I go, hey, my name is Josh Florhog. You guys just called me. And they go, right this way. And they walked me into a room. VIP. And I was like, I don't think this is good. <laughs> <laughs> and the surgeon came in, and he's like, there's a lot wrong with you. They did a couple more blood tests. He's like, I'm really worried about this. And I'm like, cool, I have a flight tomorrow for possibly the biggest show of my comedy career. <laughs> I can be good for an 11 a.m. flight, right? And he's like, no, you're going to be here for 10 days. And I was wow. like, hey, man, then I'm leaving. <laughs> what? And, and he's like, no, we have to do this surgery. Right. We, have to, we have to go in there right now. He's like, usually there's a food protocol. I don't care about that. He's like, I'm rushing you back right now. We have a surgery bed for you. It's a big deal. And I'm like... No, I want to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to break it down to you, man. You won't make it through the flight because of cabin pressure. You'll probably bleed out because wow. of the problems in your intestines, so you sitting down. And I was like, yeah, I want to take that risk. Damn. So somehow I was able to talk the doctor into he decided that he was going to, quote, unquote, put a Band-Aid on it. Put a band-aid Which means he gave me four bags of blood, which is the equivalent of an entire human being, and two bags of iron. Damn. And then let me check out with a note to land the plane if anything was to happen. What? Yes. Who does that? <laughs> the worst doctor, now that you really think about it. Wow. Either the worst or the best. Yeah, a guy who just really <laughs> believed in dreams. Because he, he's a doctor. He doesn't know what the laugh factory is. He doesn't right. know how hard like our journey is, even though his journey is also very hard. Wow. He doesn't know that this is kind of a crash. <laughs> right. And I was like, go look up the club. Right. And he did, and he came back, and he did this for me. And then I got on the plane. <laughs> he he tried to scare me. He's like, dude, you have a one in seven chance of bleeding out on this flight after we give you all this blood. And I was like, ah, it seems pretty good. Damn. <laughs> so they give me all this blood and stuff. I was able to get out of the hospital at 7 a.m., went home, grabbed my bag, took a shower. Hospital band still on my wrist. Went and checked in for my flight. I did this, which I don't like telling people, but I'll tell you because I'm a friend. <laughs> um, got an exit row seat. Totally volunteered wow. for any, if anything was to happen. Wow. 
I'd be the savior and I couldn't wow. lift my arms over I'd my be head. so pissed off. He's not moving with enough passion. What's wrong with you, boy? You're like, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that was my worry is if the plane went down in the cornfield and they're like, open the door, Josh. I'd be like, okay, here's the deal. Oh, I'm going to need shit. somebody to help me. <laughs> Damn. Crazy. Or if I needed to lay on the plane because I was sick right. in the exit row. Wow. Everybody would have hated you on the, on the flight. Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, <laughs> As you know, Louis Anderson is my uncle, so he's family, and we mean a lot to each other. I don't tell him any of this. I just told my mom. Because he would have turned you away. He would have turned me away, yeah, because uh, he cares about my life. (laughs) I told my mom as in, hey, mom, I'm doing this. She doesn't live in, I was in Minnesota. She didn't live there. She couldn't come yell at me. Mm. So she was like, all right, whatever. She told him. So I get to the hotel. I'm all checked in. I have one of my best friends come stay with me because we were planning that anyways. And now his job is to make sure I wake up from all my naps right. and can make it up the stairs. That's a good friend. Because <laughs> we're, we're at the historic uh, Hotel Del Coronado in Coronado, San Diego. Oh, nice. So beautiful, beautiful place. I yeah, could yeah. never afford to stay there if they weren't paying me to stay there. Right, right. <laughs> Um, he calls me right after he gets in. He's like, hey, come to my room. And I'm like, all right. And Louis. He, yeah. Oh, snap. <laughs> and he goes, hey, how are you feeling? <laughs> and I know it's a setup, but I still remember when you're a kid, like you still try to lie, well, like your I, teacher I'm didn't call it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm never been better. It's beautiful out and everything. And he goes, I talked to your mom. I'm like, yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Truth just came right after yeah. that. Um, I do the first show. Everything goes good. The next day. Are you nervous as hell during this whole time? Or have you just kind of like, I'm good? I've kind of. It's, it's a free feeling because yeah. I'm on borrowed time and I've been told this by everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I don't have fears of the show. It's more of just like the show is the thing I love. Right. And it's like, this is what I'm risking for it, so make it worth it. Nice. Never had better sets, by the way. Wow. When your life is on the right. line, you really Throw deliver. It all out there, right? You really <laughs> deliver. Right. Also, saw a ghost. What? Yeah, the Hotel Del Coronado is haunted. What the fuck? By a lady. Bartender! <laughs> a ghost. Yes, by a lady named Kate. What? Uh, haunts the Hotel Del Coronado. She was supposed to meet a date. He never showed up. She killed herself. She haunts the hotel. Everybody has said it. So I out loud check into the hotel. What? And this is the only time I've ever believed in ghosts. I go, I go, Kate. If I should go walk around this, because I'm very weak, and yeah. I kind of want to walk around the island. I'm like, if I should go walk around the island, uh, wake me up before the show. I'm not going to set any alarms if I sleep till the show time. And you that's told what, Kate to do this. That's what my body needs. Yes, I just said it out loud. Okay. Because I'm, okay. I'm very spiritual at this gotcha, point. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So you became, you just invited her, Kate, what's up? I'm in your yeah, place? Yeah. I, I wanted it for like four to go walk around. The fire alarm to the hotel goes off at 4 p.m. exactly. Damn it, Kate. In a 150-year-old <laughs> wooden hotel. Oh, I wake up. And I'm so dumb and now believe in a ghost <laughs> where I'm like, there's no way this hotel's on fire. I took a shower and then got ready and left. What? <laughs> I've chanced Ignored death, the whole... Just kept chancing death <laughs> this whole trip. I'm going out. I'm going yeah. out on fire, baby. Yeah. And then um, the shows go great. I make it back to the airport. I get on the plane. I'm not done making mistakes, by the way. I fly home. <laughs> my mom calls me. She goes, she goes, did your plane land? I go, yeah, I'm at the airport. I'm just walking to my car. She goes, okay, go straight to the ER. I'm like, mom, I was up all night worried. I had these shows. I had a few beers after the show, which I learned right after that I shouldn't have done. And and I go, I'm going to go home and take a little nap before I go get (laughs) surgery because they probably won't let me sleep and I'm going to be all wore out from the surgery. Right. And she goes, no, you you need to stop going to sleep. That's chancing death. So I go home and I'm like, my roommate will wake me up. I don't tell my roommate that he's supposed to wake me up. I just set my own alarm. Yeah. And by the time I woke up, my mom had called me 10 times, called him eight times, and he's knocking on my door screaming at me. He goes, why didn't you tell me you were supposed to wake me up? And I'm like, oh, yeah, man, thanks. <laughs> and then I went and got firehouse subs, even though I knew I wasn't oh, yeah. supposed to eat, and went and got surgery to the hospital. Subs. That's a good sub to go. That's your, that could have been your last sub. It could have. That's why I got it. And I get to the hospital, and the guy goes, wow, you made it. And I'm like, yeah. Wow. And he's like, didn't think you would. Wow. And he's like, you didn't eat, right? Because you have to have an intestine surgery. I'm oh, like, actually, a couple hours ago, I had firehouse shit. subs. Damn. And he goes, gosh, you don't stop screwing up. Damn. And then um, they prepped me for surgery and everything. Because I had the messed up intestine surgery, my mom's an RN. She's like, you need an intestines, a gastro specialist. Mm. So I keep saying that to all the surgeons. I'm like, I want a specialist. I want a specialist. This lady comes in right before I fall asleep. She goes, I'm your surgeon. 
And I go, I want a specialist. She goes, you're not that important. Shut up and go to sleep. <laughs> and I was like, I trust you more than anything. This is how people should be talking wow. to me. And then I fell asleep and they did three surgeries. Damn. Yeah, they did three surgeries. They found a lot more wrong with me, which is why, as you know, because we're friends, I don't drink yeah. because yeah. my I found out I was allergic to alcohol through that surgery. Wow. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. 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 I didn't believe you at first, but now after hearing the story, I'm just like, eh. So I'm in surgery. I had intestine problems. And then they followed it up to my liver. And um, my liver is so generated that I was only 27 when this happened. They assumed that since I was 14, I was drinking a bottle of grain liquor a day and a 12 pack of beer because that's how destroyed my liver was. Wow. And so they asked my girlfriend that and she was like, no, no, he doesn't really drink all that because I didn't drink all that much. Right. I was working and then traveling so much. And they're like, oh no, because that meant they had to run more tests and they found out that I was just allergic to alcohol. So wow. any fatty food I eat or alcohol, it just eats my liver. That sounds like a nightmare. It is a nightmare. No, the, so no liquor no, and fatty foods? That was oh, the compromise they made with the surgeon. My chest. <laughs> when she came in and she's like, here's everything that happened. She's like, you can't drink and you probably can't eat like fast foods and stuff. Damn. And I was like, I have one problem with that. She goes, what? I go, you can pick one. <laughs> right. I go, do, I'm do not both. a saint. Right. You can pick one. And she I'm goes, a comedian. Like, yeah. liquor and fatty foods is it's what all I we do. Get. Yeah. Right. It's That's what most of our pick. Right. What am I supposed to afford? Tender greens? I'm not yeah. on that type of pay plan right <laughs> I now. I don't have tender greens money. <laughs> I'm an opener. I'm a right, McDonald's right, guy. Right, right. In and out if I have a good set. They yeah. pay me for gas, but yeah. <laughs> we're pushing it anything beyond. <laughs> yeah, so I had, to, uh, I had to make a major, some major life wow, changes. Wow, wow. And all this time, I thought I was serious about my craft. <laughs> Damn, I gotta put my life on the line for this shit. Next time Dude, something happens to me, you got to. This wow. is this is either depending on who you tell the the most heroic story of <laughs> right, all time right. or the dumbest. Right, right, right. <laughs> depending on the room. Yeah, depending on the room, people are like, "You're an idiot," wow. and then people who like are chasing it are like, "I get it." Of course. Yeah. Wow. Wow. How so? I mean, you said your sets were great. Was it all worth it to this day? Now, it, obviously, you have a dope ass story. Yeah, looking <laughs> back on it, I probably would do it. Like everybody's like, looking back on it, you wouldn't do that again. I'm like, yeah, I probably would. Yeah, right. Because right. since then, I mean, the Laugh Factory, it's a it's a chain. So there, I've got to perform on right. the Vegas Strip three times. Wow. Since then, three different weeks. Wow. I mean, I've gotten a lot out of those sets specifically. Nice. So I, I really felt like they were worth it. Hell yeah. I mean, looking at it from a grand spectrum, no, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. But like looking back on it as a thing I love, it definitely was 100% worth it. Damn, man. That's yeah. awesome, dude. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this doctor, though, because I paid attention to your story. He wasn't the specialist. He basically said, yeah, man, going out there, have a good time. Then I wonder what the conversation was like with the other office staff, because I'm sure they were talking about it. that's the whole thing. And my insurance, <laughs> insurance still approved all this. So it's not like he could be like, we gave him a weekend to figure it right, out. Right, right. Because they'd be like, no. Right. So he had to write something up. Wow. Yeah. It's a guy who believed in a dream, I'd like to think, or nice. a guy who didn't want to do a surgery and maybe was off in like a couple hours. Something like that. It was yeah. either one of those. Like he was <laughs> like, I'm trying to get off early to right. watch the game. I got a date. Right. If I can get out of here and there's no major surgery, <laughs> right. I could probably cut the last two hours out of my shit. Go chase your dream, <laughs> yeah. bro. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I looked you up. I would normally say no, but you're funny enough. Right. Go out there and beat somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Take this blood. Wow. The nurse was not nice about it. Oh, I tried shit. to make a couple like little jokes. He was like a really big guy too. Yeah. The, he was like a bodybuilder slash nurse. Damn. So I tried to make a couple jokes to lighten the mood because I knew everybody was kind of mad at me. Yeah. And we're comedians, so we want everybody to like us. Right. So I was trying yeah. to lighten the mood, right. even though I talked down to them about going to do stand up comedy and not letting them do their job. Right. You're like, I'm going. Yeah. I tried to make a <laughs> joke, and he was like, "Shut up." <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he was really mean. He just turned into a bully. I think wow. he was like, this kid, I could beat this kid. Right. You're like, I'm going to live my dream. I don't care. Yeah. Wow. I'm not going to be a nurse like you. <laughs> right. Which I didn't say. Wow. Well, yeah, he, he sounds pretty big. Yeah. I mean, no. You didn't sound like you had the strength to fight his ass either. <laughs> no. I barely had the strength to get up. <laughs> Damn. Dude, that's dope, man. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you shook back from it. You're doing well. You're running. You're taking care of yourself now. Uh, this pandemic has made everything different. Obviously, this was probably... Before this was, the pand yeah, <laughs> pandemic. Was four or five years ago, I think. Right. Yeah. So how have things changed for you in terms of creating, you know, being a creative sometimes it's tough. I know for me, I had hella anxiety. I was rough those first couple of months. But since then, I've been trying to be, you know, yeah. proactive. Yeah, I've been, I mean, this whole thing is a blessing and a curse. We can't go out and do stand-up. That's that's the most terrible thing. We can't meet up with people. I mean, this is the first time I've seen you since Secure and right. we're friends. Right. Like, you can't meet up with your comic buddies and do writing because that's where a lot of our punching up comes. 
But I mean, I've been just trying to, I guess, strengthen the other comedy muscles. I've been doing some Zoom acting classes. Mm. I've been writing, just trying to figure out how to write pilots and TV shows and nice. anime series and things like that. <laughs> write me in. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Always. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. We're, we're nice. going to be in a team buddy cop hey, movie where we grow yeah. mustaches. Dude, it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. We're going to have big mustaches <laughs> and we're going to drive a sports car. Be the new star skin hutch. That's dude. what dude, it I'm is. Gently, I'm with it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, this time has definitely given everybody a lot more opportunity to be that much more creative. Take care of our personal health as oh, yeah. well, our finances. My credit score went up and shit. I'm like, hey. My credit score's up. I've been running. Right. I started doing that. <laughs> I run about three miles a day, mainly just to get away from, like, you're married to. Yeah, and man. We're trapped in a small, yeah. we're both in small right. places. Right. We're trapped with our significant others nonstop. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm going to go run. So I've really been bettering myself. That is. That's how the relationship survived is because yeah. you take that time. If you stayed in there longer, oh, not yeah. only would you gain more weight, but you'd probably go crazy and make y'all break up yeah, or some shit. Yeah, we'd fight too much. <laughs> it's just one of us has to get out of the house so right. the other one can breathe for a Man, little bit. And I, I've been running. I so. did the same thing. Yeah. I, I was I, I did the running for a little while, but it still wasn't enough. I went out and got a job. They weren't even hiring. I was like, hey man, look, man, I can do that thing, man. I can watch You're dishes, like, watch cars. Let me cars. hang out here. Let me let me chill here. <laughs> yeah. Send me a paycheck. <laughs> here we go. If you just send me something that shows I was here, that's all I care about. Right, 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 man. So yeah, man, I'm glad to hear that you're, you're writing, you're doing stand-up. Is that where you'd like to see your career go? To more writing or maybe on camera or well, uh, where, it was up to you. Everything's open right now, and especially with me taking like these acting classes and stuff, I've been getting into that. So just trying to be as well-rounded as possible for when all this is over. Right. Have, like if any opportunity comes my way, I feel a lot more ready than I was, let's say, six months ago. Nice. Like I feel like if you know, because there are people out watching stand-up and things. If they were like, "Would you like to write for a show, or would you like to act in a show?" I now have at least some of those shops to be like, hey, I know how to do this. Nice. Or at least have an idea. Sure. What I think is decent work. Yeah. I and mean, they probably think will be mid-scale. Right. <laughs> like, actually, yeah. I've been researching this for the past six months since the pandemic. Okay, and I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm aware. <laughs> right. Nice, dude. Awesome, awesome, Yeah, it awesome. was good. I, I spent time between here and Vegas, too. So uh, a little bit of both. I nice. was with Louie for a little while, which was cool. Me and him did a sketch, which ended up being on NBC for the Feeding America Comedy Festival. Oh, shit. So that was fun. So I got to film a sketch, which we shot it on my iPhone. So there's a lot of me and him yelling at each other <laughs> and a lot of stacking iPhones on books and, wow. you know, TV stands. Right, to make it work. Yeah. But it looked like it went far. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it went good. It was fun. They enjoyed it. Nice. Which I was freaking out about because I've never done something that big scale. And that's the whole weird thing, obviously, too, with living with Louie. Like, I had never been on network TV, especially a sketch that I shot and co-wrote and, wow. and co-starring in. Nice. And he's just like, yeah, this is another thing on TV. And I'm like, this is the right. biggest this is moment the thing. of, right. this of is my who I career. Am. Right, 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 right. <laughs> nice, man. So I got to ask you, definitely I got to ask you this question before we wrap up. Uh, to somebody that might be listening or watching that may be dealing with their own you know, struggle in terms of trying to overcome or still trying to persevere throughout those hard times. What type of advice would you give to somebody who is kind of struggling mentally or struggling health-wise and still considering pursuing their dreams? Obviously, you will put it all on the line, uh, but what, do you have any words of encouragement for somebody? I, I would say don't, don't make it pushing a boulder, move a couple rocks every day. It's the way I've kind of been taking it, especially in this pandemic. I always try to do just one thing creative every day whether it is write a page of a script or even just watch a couple things for research. Don't, don't put so much pressure on yourself to make it overnight. Nice. Just work on the building block. So just do something little every day and have those turn into a bigger thing. I think that's a big Damn problem. It, Josh. That's it. I love it. And I had that problem <laughs> the first two months is I wanted to take over the world. I was taking an online writing class and acting class at the same time, which was completely dumb because wow. I was learning too much and it was hard to retain. Right. And I was like, if I space this out and just learned a little every day, I would retain more information and I would be ultimately better. Nice. So I definitely recommend... Yeah, like I said, move a few rocks as opposed to a big boulder. I can see that sit on a shirt, dog. Yeah. I'm going to cut you in. I'm going to do some... Kick a few rocks. Oh, I'll get it wrong, though. Kick a few <laughs> rocks. Don't let the boulder fall on you. I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for Josh, me, please tell everybody where they can follow you, what you got coming up. Um, Obviously, with the pandemic, I have nothing set in stone, but obviously, Laugh After Dark, when that's up and running, also, I'll be on the road hitting that a bunch, too. So check out for stand-up dates. You can find everything on joshfcomedy.com and all social media platforms, Josh F. Comedy. Also, I have a podcast called Morgan's First Time. 
You can follow that Morgan's First Time Pod on all your podcast needs and then Facebook and Instagram. Boom. Find them. <laughs> Find it. Yo, and thank y'all for tuning in to another dope-ass episode of Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I'm your boy, Charlie Wilson TV. We out. Look, look at y'all out here tuning in. Okay. okay. No, hey, thank you for tuning in. You make sure you continue to tune in. Tell your friends, your baby mama, your baby. I, 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 tell him too. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, support. All things do tell. I've been your host, Charlie Wilson. I'm here with Laugh After Dark, baby. You know how we do it.